Hello and welcome to part 6 of our input field exploits module. So these are the few assumptions that I am working with. I am assuming that you have a prerequisite knowledge of following tools and software. If you don't, please check out the resources mentioned at the end of this video. This is our model structure and we are on the sixth part which is cracking the shell. Now I have divided this final part into two sub parts for the sake of simplicity and keeping the videos short. So until now we have created a POC, gained control of the execution flow of the application and find out bad characters. Now all that remaining is to add our payload shell code to our exploit, fire it against the target application and obtain a shell. Now in order to do that, our execution flow for our payload will be first we will align ESP register above our shell code. If you remember, right now ESP points to our shell code. So any stack operations will interfere with our shell code and hence render it unexecutable. In order to prevent that, we will decrease ESP by 127 or 126 bytes above our shell code so that it does not interfere with our payload shell code. We will then jump back to the larger portion of the buffer and execute a stage 1 payload shell code which is around 98 bytes. The stage 1 payload shell code will download the stage 2 payload shell code and execute it. And then it will finally flood our target machine with command window popups and on our attacking machine we will obtain a shell. So let's move to the lab and update our POC to include the ESP aligning part. So this is a POC that we had created up till now and now we will add code to align ESP above our shell code. So I'll put that code in comment here and we paste it and create a new variable called align ESP and I'll store this shell code into that and uh, we will include this align ESP shell code right before we jump to the larger portion of our buffer and if we see that this align ESP shell code is of 9 bytes so it will fit in between the space so we will just send one x90 which is knock and then I will add align ESP I'll save it and then I'll run this POC to generate the evil shell code and it looks like there is some kind of error it says that align ESP is not defined and there is a spelling mistake here so now it should work fine yeah and I'll go to my axe ssh.txt copy this evil string next I'll launch emulate debugger and in it I'll run the target application run the application alright the application is running and now I'll set a breakpoint at the push ESP instruction and finally I'll go to my target application settings logging and this time this is already selected for me so I'll just remove this and paste the evil string ok ok and we have hit our breakpoint now if I step into this you can see that we are at knock and then we'll align ESP register right over our shell code and in the next step you should see the value of ESP changing from this to this value So on the value of EX and ESP is same. So that means that the ESP register is now well above the portion of our shell code. So that means that now ESP is pointing to our buffer space. However, it's well above the buffer space that we'll be using as a payload shell code or that we'll be using to write our payload shell code. And then we'll finally take the jump. And it looks like that there are two jump statements here that is because I might have repeated jump statements and uh, yes so I'll just remove this ok 
okay and then we take the jump and now we have landed into the larger portion of our buffer and if you see this address here EC93 and if you match it with the address in ESP you will see EC89 which is above this portion so any stack operations now will be done in this part and it will not interfere with the part below all right so moving on to the next part that is sending the stage one payload shellcode to our application so before i integrate the stage one payload shellcode in our application i would first like to give you a brief overview of what we will be doing in this stage one so the stage one payload shellcode is a msi exec.exe based shellcode and it downloads our stage 2 payload from a web server and executes it using msi exec.exe this payload is a msi file and it is executed using this command here which is msi exec and we are giving it a switch i for install and then we are giving it a location for the package or the payload that is to be downloaded and then we are telling it to install it with no ui and this is the structure of the command that this payload will be executing and this is the actual command with server address and payload file name which will be executed using our stage 1 payload now, this stage 1 payload uses hard code addresses of load library a and system functions and these can be found using rwin.exe file we'll see that in the lab in a while now in order to understand more about this shellcode you can use these shellcode reference links so first is the exploit db link from where i have adapted this shellcode and if you want to learn more about executing msi files or installing packages using msi exec you can use this link here and the size of the stage one payload shellcode is 98 bytes so it fits well within the space that we have available in our buffer now let's go through this stage one payload shellcode instruction by instruction so first in this part we are finding the address of msvcrt.dll so we are pushing msvcrt onto stack and then we are moving this address of load library a to ebx and then we are calling ebx which will essentially call load library a function the function will return the address of msvcrt.dll which it will store in eax so we are moving that address into ebp register using this instruction now this address of load library a function changes with every start of the operating system this is because the dll in which this function resides that is a kernel redo.dll is aslr enabled or address space layout randomization enabled on windows 7 sp1 x86 so we will have to find this address again using rwin.exe in the next part we are pushing this command onto stack and these are the instructions to do that and then finally we are storing the address of system function into eax and then calling eax so this will essentially call the system function and execute the command that we saw previously which is this command and then we finally zero out eax and push it on stack and then move an arbitrary memory address in eax so that it does not break our shell code and runs continuously essentially bombarding the target machine with terminal window pop-ups once again we need to find the address of system function using rwin.exe as the dll in which this function resides which is msvcrt.dll is aslr enabled and hence the address changes whenever the operating system restarts so let's move to the lab and integrate this stage one payload shellcode into our poc so let's paste the stage one payload here and we we'll write stage one and remember that we still need to find the address of load library a function and the system function so to do that i'll open a command window and go to documents all right i missed writing cd cd documents 
and now I will run Arvin dot exe and then the name of the DL which is kernel 32 dot DL and name of the function which I need to find bear in mind that this is case sensitive so write the name of the function as it is shown in the MSDN documentation so it says that in kernel 32.dll load library A is located at this address so we just mark it to copy this address and press enter to copy it and we will update our POC with this address first paste this address and let's put a comment here that this is the address of load library A function in on Windows 7 SP1 and X86 version. To be on the safer side, let's also mention that this is ASLR enabled so that anyone else who will be using this exploit knows that they need to generate this address or find this address again in order to make the exploit working. So next we will find the address of system function. So instead of load library A, I will write system and instead of kernel 32.dll, I will specify ms vcrt.dll and in this particular instance, this function is located at this address. So let's paste it here and I will copy this comment and update it so instead of load library a we will just write system now we need to change these addresses in this stage 1 shell code so let's find 395c as this part remains static and it's here so 395c or 5c39 and we'll update it with c5 and then 75 and similarly, we will find out the address of system function in this stage 1 payload shellcode. And for that, we need to find out v1 6f or 6f v1 bytes. 6f v1 bytes. So here they are. And in the beginning of this, we need to replace those bytes with da75. So we need to replace the 7D with DA and 77 with 75 and save it. Now we can copy this shell code here and create another variable called stage 1 and just paste it here. Alright. And let's update our evil string. And uh, we'll give it a buffer of let's say five knobs into five, and after that, or before that, we'll write a stage one. And remember that this is 98 and this is five, so 98 plus five is 103. So we need to reduce this by 103 bytes, so that means that it becomes. 111 bytes of capital A. It's we'll save it and run the POC again to generate the evil string. We'll copy the evil string and restart the application in Emulator Debugger and press play to run the application. And let's put a breakpoint at the push ESP instruction here. And in my target application, I'll go to settings, I'll go to details, settings, logging, and remove this tenant.log and paste our evil string. Press OK and OK. So a breakpoint is hit, and I'll step into it. Then we align the ESP register, we'll jump back, 
and we landed in the larger portion of a buffer so let's step into it one by one and this is the stage one payload shellcode that we had sent so let's step into it ax and here as you can see that that address was translated into load library a and now on this instruction we are calling load library a function so i'll just step over it and now we are loading our command which we need to execute onto us onto stack so i'll step into it and you can see that this command is building here step by step Right. and then we are finally calling system function so that it will download and execute our payload shellcode and then after that we are pointing AX to an arbitrary memory address so that stage 1 shellcode runs in an infinite loop and bombards the system with terminal window pop-ups so for now we will stop here as we still need to generate stage 2 payload shellcode and make it available via web server which we will see in the next video these are the few learning resources you can use to learn more about the tools and techniques that we are using in this module. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next part.